Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 2.43 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem states the following. It says, imagine a bead of mass M that slides frictionlessly around a circular wire ring of circumference A. This is just like a free particle except that Psi of X has to be the same as Psi of X plus A, right? There is this periodicity that every time we go around this distance A, we start off at the same place where we began. With this in mind, we want to find the stationary states and of course with the appropriate normalization and the corresponding allowed energies. Note that there are two independent solutions for each energy corresponding to clockwise and counterclockwise circulation. Call them Psi N plus and Psi N minus. How do you account for this degeneracy in view of the theorem in problem 2.42? That is, why does the theorem fail in this case? Okay, um, so let's see exactly what this is all about. So in this problem, we have a free particle. So our wave function is going to be A E I K X plus B e to the minus i k x, just as we have had in many other occasions with free particles. In case you don't know where this comes from, this simply comes from solving the Schrodinger equation for the potential equal to zero. Now, just like many times before, we apply boundary conditions, except that this time our boundary condition is that psi of x has to be the same as psi of x plus a. So plugging this in, we get that a e i k x plus b e to the minus i k x has to be the same as a e to the i k x plus a plus b e to the minus i k x plus a. So this is the boundary condition. Now this of course is valid for every single value of x. So we now want to evaluate this at a given point of x. And of course, since this is value for every single value of x, um, I mean, is this, this is valid for every single value of x, then we should take values of x when this is a relatively simple expression. So x equals zero, for example, will give us something simple. So at x equals zero, we get a plus b is equal to a e to the i k a, plus b e to the minus i k a. And we can go for another point, right? Because we have two um, unknowns, a and b, and we can now try to find another point where our expression can be simplified at least a little bit. Since we have e to the i k x, we could look for values of x that gives us something like e to the i pi over two or e to the i pi or e to the i two pi or something like that. Uh, I'm going to go for something that gives us e to the i pi over two. And we can see that if x is pi over two k, we will end up with e to the i pi over two, which is simply i. So for that reason, we will use this value. So plugging it in, we get a e to the i pi over two plus b e to the minus i pi over two. This is equal to a e to the i pi over two times e to the i k a plus b e to the minus i pi over two e to the minus i k a. Um, so here we can simplify a few things. So this e is i, so we get a i plus b actually um, here it is minus i right because this is cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine of minus pi over 2 right which is minus 1 so we get minus i so this is minus i b and here we have a i e to the i k a minus again b e to the minus i k a now, um, we can divide by i. Wait, I didn't write the i here. There was an i there, of course. So we divide by i. 
And there we go, we have found equation number two. Now, um, we can get rid of either A or B. So for example, we can get rid of B if we simply add these two equations together, right? So we can do one plus two, and we get two A, right? Taking a look at this, the B's cancel out on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So we get two A is equal to two A, E, I, K, A. So for this to hold, Either a is equal to zero, in which case we get a trivial answer, zero equal to zero, or, right, now dividing by a and by two, we get one is equal to e i k a. And for that to hold, this basically means cosine of k a plus i sine of k a has to be equal to one. So we need this to be equal to zero, and this to be equal to one. So that happens if k times a is equal to two n pi, with n just, you know, any natural number. So this can be zero plus, actually not even, not even natural, just any um, entire number, right? Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and so on. Okay, um, so these are our conditions. But notice that these are two different situations. So if a is equal to zero, we can simply plug it into any of these equations, but the first one may be a bit simpler. So plugging a equals zero here, we get that. So plugging in, plug in a equals zero, we get that b has to be equal to b e to the minus i k a. So if a is equal to zero, then we get this equation. But notice that this tells us that either b is equal to zero, but in that case, both b and a would be equal to zero, right? And in that case, we wouldn't have a wave function. So we can't really choose this at this moment. So the only other option is that one has to be equal to e to the minus i k a. So this means that one has to be equal to cosine of k a, Technically, it's minus Ka, but we know that cosine is even, right? Minus i sine of Ka. And this is fulfilled, of course, when this is 0 and when this is 1, just as before. So when Ka is equal to 2n pi. Um, so this is the condition. So if a is equal to 0, we get one solution, which we can call psi n minus. Why minus? Because the b has the negative exponential, which is b e to the minus i, and then k, but what is k? So k is 2n pi over a. So this would be um, 2n pi over a times x. So this is one solution. Not normalized, but one solution. Now, Let's take a look at the other case because we just saw the case a is equal to zero. Now we can do a similar procedure um, just to verify that we thoroughly understand um, where the other result comes from. Um, so we, we could actually from this derive it, but I would just want to make sure that this is as clear as possible. So now instead of adding one and two, we could subtract one and two. So one minus two. So by doing that, the a's cancel out and now we get to b is equal to, and then the a's cancel out, to b e to the minus i k a. And from here, we will find what we already saw, that either b is equal to zero, or that k a has to be equal to 2 n pi. And this is the same as before. So here, we are in exactly the same situation that we just had for a, but this time for b, right? So plugging it back in, we will get, so plugging in that b equals zero, for example, will get us that a has to be equal. So we, we would get, so b equals zero. We get that a has to be equal to a, e, i, k, a. So once again, we get the condition k, a is two n pi and b is equal to zero. So we cannot choose a equals zero. So that means that the second solution is going to be psi n 
plus is equal to a e to the i 2n i x over a. Okay, so these are our wave functions. Let's now normalize them. So 1 is equal to, now, integral from 0 to a, right? We are only integrating once because it's going to be spinning around all the time, but we only want to integrate over one spin. And then any of these squared, so for example, a squared, and then e times its complex conjugate, but they cancel out because it's one is positive, one is negative, they add, they cancel out. So we get a squared dx. So this is simply a squared times a. And notice that this didn't depend at all on the wave function. So we will get the same when we do this part. Now from here, we find that a is one over the square root of a. And for b, it's exactly the same, right? Integral from zero to a of b dx, which is sorry, b squared, which is b squared a, which gives us b is 1 over square root of a. So we simply plug them in. So 1 over square root of a and 1 over the square root of a. And there we have the wave functions. Now, how do we find the energy? Uh, there's a few ways to go about it. I would say that perhaps one of the quickest ways to find it is simply to take two derivatives. So we know that minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi dx squared is equal to e psi, right? So let's take two derivatives of any of our wave functions and we will find the energy. So for example, let's begin with this one. So we get minus h bar squared over 2m, then one over square root of a, and notice that this is simply an exponential. So the function itself won't change. And all we will get when we take a derivative is this thing in front. So the derivative is this thing squared multiplying the wave function. So we get, um, what is the thing it's, again? So the minus will be positive, but we have i squared. So we get minus 4n squared pi squared divided by a squared. And this is multiplying the exponent, e to the minus i 2n pi x over a. This is equal to e psi. But of course, this 1 over square root of a and this combined are our wave function psi. So now we just multiply all of our constants through and we get that, let's see, um, 2 uh, n squared h bar squared pi squared divided by m a squared is equal to our energy. And we get the exact same result for the other case, right? Because the only difference was this minus sign, but since we took two derivatives, the minus turned into a plus. So there is no difference. So we can see that these are our two wave functions. And this right here is their energy. And we can see that our wave functions in one dimension have the same energy. And just in the previous problem, we showed that that is not a thing that can happen, right? We said bound states in one dimension cannot be, it cannot be degenerate. So what's going on here? So the reason why this fails is because what we required in the previous problem um, to show that these, uh, that there couldn't be degenerate bound states was that we needed psi to go to zero as x went to infinity, but that doesn't happen here. So that means that the constant k that we found in the previous video, it's got nothing to do with k here, right? The k that we found that was equal to the derivatives, right? We had this entire thing. Um, that k, we couldn't determine it. So for that reason, the theorem doesn't hold. So this is the important part, right? Psi doesn't go to zero as x goes to infinity, which was one of the conditions that we found in the other video. So there we have it. Um, this is the problem 2.43. So, you know, I hope this was useful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, maybe sharing it with some of your classmates. And if you, you really enjoy the content, maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.